Okay, Council. Um, discussions on the Bay Bridge Crossing Study, Tier 1 Draft um, Impact Study, Environmental in Impact Study. Um, Council of the Maryland uh, Transportation Authority has uh, um, released the, the Bay Crossing Study um, Impact and has scheduled a public hearing um, in, in, in April. Um, Concord 8 is still uh, included in the study um, in Talbot County. Um, so uh, we have invited Miguel, our, our uh, director of planning, um, to, to discuss this a little bit with us so we can um, hopefully put this thing to bed and it's not coming at all, hopefully. But Miguel, are you with us? I am with you. Yeah, so let's um let's let's I don't wanna I don't want to um I'd rather not spend a whole lot of time on it because there's not one person hopefully breathing in Talbot County that wants this. <laughs> so, you know, um so can you can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. I mean this is um the draft environmental impact statement. It's uh their tier one NEPA process. They're required to go through this. NEPA process, um, as you are aware from, I think, conversations that the council has had in the past, there were a different um, alignment alternatives that were presented in the um, draft EIS document. Um, this council has provided communication, I think, twice uh, on, the, um, on, the, on the tier one study and has made it very clear that um, they oppose the uh, corridor alignment that impacts Talbot County specifically um, uh, across the bay and through just north of St. Michael's uh, and then um, through uh, Talbot County north of Easton to Route 50. Uh, we have made that very clear. Um, the draft uh, environmental impact statement has made it very clear that preferred alignment is uh, existing or uh, a future crossing um, adjacent to the existing Bay Bridge um, and then on to 50. Um, so um, as you mentioned, Mr. President, there will be, um, I think, at least one public hearing. I can't remember if there's more. Yeah, than in that. April. Yeah, in April. In April. Yeah. 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 And um, we do have another opportunity to comment if the council should uh, wish to do that. Um, and uh, um, and uh, it, again, if, if, if funding becomes available, um, there will be a tier two study that identifies more specific alignment alternatives uh, within that corridor that would be selected. Again, the, the preferred corridor in this draft is, is a corridor adjacent to the existing Okay, yeah, th 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 thank you, Miguel. Um, so, um, count, council, uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming council wants to speak on this. Um, I, I think we need to send another letter. So um, let, let's hear from council. Um, Mrs. Price. Finding the unmute button. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you remember, this was, there were 14 that they looked at from, you know, all the way from the northern end of the Chesapeake Bay, all the way to the southern end of the Chesapeake Bay. And um, what I'll say is, you know, a lot of people think about just the beach traffic and that um, the reason, you know, people wondered why wouldn't something say in the southern part, because right now we're in the middle, the, the six, seven, and eight, Talbot County being the corridor eight, the seven being the existing Bay Bridge, you know, why wouldn't something more Southern that goes to Ocean City, but, um, you know, we're talking about commuter traffic and that commuter traffic between, you know, the East Shore and, you know, Baltimore, Annapolis and DC. So, no, so when they looked at the impact and how much traffic flow would be reduced, a lot of people just think about beach traffic, but really you got to talk about Monday through Friday, people going back and forth to work, which is why it ended up falling in the middle section of, of quarter six, seven, and eight. Um, clearly now that this study is out and the environmental impacts and the cost 
of the bridge is, you know, well more than double if funding ever became available. Um, so I don't think that there's any um, danger of it actually being chosen to be, you know, corridor six or corridor eight, and particularly ours being corridor eight. The, the cost and the environmental impact it would ne it would never pass. So I. I think we'll be fine, but I absolutely think we should continue to reiterate that letter and talk about and talk about that. Thank you, Ms. Price. Um, who, who was that? Good, good. Mr. Davilio, was that you? Uh, no, but but I can go. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's fine. All right. So I'm taking this directly from the report on page 12 of the executive summary. There. Are, Two statements, and this I, I really like this page for anybody who's looking for information on it, uh, but to kind of calm some fears, and there's a lot of acronyms I'm going to try to read through. As a result, Corridor 7 was identified as the Maryland Department of Transportation recommended preferred corridor alternative, which is adding another bridge to the current location. The, the selection of an alternative will not be finalized until the comments on this draft environmental impact statement and input from the public hearings are considered. So they're still waiting to hear from the public on this draft environmental impact statement, but they have narrowed it down to the three with number seven being the shortest crossing of the Chesapeake Bay to, due to the narrower width of the bay at this location. And due to that, they're recommending this location because of its, it, it has a smaller environmental impact because of the short location. So I, I'm excited that they have address some of the big concerns that I have. Um, but I'm also hoping and when we met with them two years ago in Ocean City at Mako, we brought up traffic flow from Annapolis and from DC all the way to the beach. This study is just across the bay. And I am concerned about when cars or more cars are kind of come through Easton. That study hasn't been done nor through Cambridge and continuing there, there will be bottlenecks. So uh, I, I would like anybody who is sending statements on this on behalf of Talbot County to also consider that uh, we want to make sure that they're addressing that as well. So uh, corridor set, um, I believe we're all in agreement on corridor seven, but uh, let's make sure that we do keep them, hold them accountable, that they maintain traffic flow all the way through our county, not just across the bay. Thank you, Mr. Davelli. I appreciate you bringing up those those points and, and reading that for us and, and getting everybody online with uh, with that. So, um, Mr. Uh, Pack. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Callahan. <clears throat> yeah, we, we, we addressed this two years ago uh, down in Ocean City with uh, MDE and MD, uh, MTA uh, regarding our opposition to Corridor 8. Uh, a number of things that were already mentioned uh, by Mr. Villio, uh, as well as Mrs. Price. Uh, I don't want to go through those again, um, but um, quite obviously, you know, the, the environmental impact and the traffic impact coming through um, St. Mike. I, I, I think they even changed this a bit from the from the original report. So I think the original report had the traffic bleeding into 50, and now it looks like it's going to go straight across uh, our Royal Oak. But anyway. Um, it, um, it, it's quite obviously not, not the, uh, not the corridor that should be selected. And it sounds like that they have uh, come to that determination as well. So, uh, but it does not hurt to go on record again and to say that we, we certainly are opposed to corridor eight being, uh, being one of their, uh, selections. Thank you, Mr. Pack. Uh, Mr. Vice President. Uh, I, I, I agree with all the points uh, made by, uh, uh, other council members already here. I do think that we should add a letter for the record in this public comment period. Um, and while I'm relieved that the that this draft at tier one um, shows corridor eight not to be the preferred route for multiple sound uh, cost and environmental reasons, um, I'm disappointed that uh, despite the fact that we in a previous communication already uh, informed the MTA of the potential impact to historic resources. <laughs> These were given no acknowledgement in the draft EIS, uh, at least not in the executive summary. And and even if there is some fine print down below, some of those points should be really be elevated to the 
uh, to the executive summary uh, because these are these are some of the of the really consequential impacts of of, uh, of a corridor eight uh, route. Um, it, I, I find also that the measures of the impacts on low income and minority communities were measured by census tract. Uh, and they found in summary that no impacted census tracts in Talbot County that are that are uh, qualify as low income or, or minority communities. But we know, in fact, that uh, that this ignores the, the direct and devastating impact to both Copperville and Unionville. Well, clearly those are not uh, separated out of census tracts or they would have surfaced uh, in that in that analysis. And so the, it suggests that there's no impact to these low income and minority communities where we know, in fact, that there would be. Um, I, I think that, you know, this is a, perhaps a flaw in the methodology, but it's something that that does need to be uh, pointed out and should be emphasized in our in our letter, uh, our comment on this draft. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, could, Mr. Callahan. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Could I tag on to what Mr. Davilio was mentioning? Um, so I think it's that we should not only be just reiterating what we've already reiterated about corridor eight, but again, there's no, I don't think there's any danger of that, but it is exactly that the um, improving the roadways through Queen Anne's County, Talbot County, Dorchester County, um, and we have spoken with the representatives in person about that, but I think that probably should be the main thrust of our letter, since th that's probably the only one they're going to be considering, is to make them very aware that, I mean, with, with just two lanes of traffic, with all of the traffic lights that go through there, um, you know, the, the traffic, just local traffic, even if you're not traveling, is really bad, so that they need to address putting a third lane in all the way down through Dorchester County um, and then figuring out, I don't know how you address the traffic lights because there's really no way to bypass around it. But certainly, a, you know, a third lane would would be helpful. And I think also that um, they need the, the overpass where it splits at 404, I think is worth mentioning. Um, because that traffic light there is a big bottleneck because a lot of people will get off and instead of staying on 50 going through Talbot County, they'll take 404, which is a good thing, but it stops there because it's a, tra a left turn traffic light. So those two things I would hope we could include in our letter. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Price. You guys brought up a lot of good points. Appreciate it. So, um, Mr. Stam, do you want to, um, you and uh, Miguel, do you want to go ahead and try to draft up a, a letter? with all these, um, you know, very, very important comments that, that council has, has brought up. Yes, sir. We will take care of that. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, council. Okay. Thank you, Miguel, too. Appreciate you being on here with us. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So council, let's, uh, let's kind of move on, on to the next.